Hi YouTube, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be on my computer for the entirety of this episode showing you guys a, a program called Google SketchUp. Now, I use this to help me with many of my projects, including the van build, which will be the focus of this video. So I've shown in a couple of previous videos um, me designing framing or, or designing layouts and that kind of thing in the program, but I haven't really addressed it head on and I think it's a really useful tool to, to be able to help with any project but specifically the van build is tremendously benefiting from my use of this program. So what I'm showing you right here is the original layout of the van. This is what it looked like when I bought it. And so what I did was basically I went in and I measured everything in the van and I made a very precise uh, model of what it looks like. So I took a, a measuring tape in real life and I went, okay, so from this point here to the back door, how, how wide is that? And it was 11 feet, eight inches and seven and a half, or seven eighths of an inch, right? So basically this program, you can, you can make anything. It's just with basic shapes and you can make framing. So I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be a tutorial, but I'm just gonna kind of show you the idea of it. There's lots of tutorials online of, of how to use Google uh, SketchUp and the Tiny Nest, Kiva and Jake, they have a very good uh, walkthrough of how to do tiny houses. And I have was following their um, series and I've watched their videos on it. And a lot of what I know about SketchUp, I learned from them. So I will leave a link in the video description for that. So this is the original layout. And I'm just gonna show you here that this is very, very rough. Um, so for instance, this is the way that they had the kitchen. So let me open this one up here. And you'll, you can see here, if I go right into here, that there is like, the, like there's no framing in here. There's no boards. This is just a, a square basically. Um, this is a great way to design things is just to, to grab a shape and say, oh, well maybe I want this to be a little bit longer. So then you can drag it out and say, oh yeah, I want my kitchen to be that wide. This is the first design that I built for the van. And as you can see, it's quite similar to the original layout. We still have the bench seat here in an L shape. I've just moved the kitchen from one side to the other. The bed is still at the back and all of that. Only I've added this wall and, and brought it in here. And so I've designed things fairly roughly in this one. Um, not all the framing is exact. I believe if we open this up here, um, yeah, this is just a box. It's not framed out or anything. And I've still kind of kept similar things from the old one. So here's that fuse box that used to be up there and all that stuff. So this is just me mostly changing colors of things, uh, taking materials and saying, okay, I want this to be made out of wood and I want this to be, uh, I was thinking of doing white uh, paneling at the time and it just helps with the walls to be white and that kind of thing. I had the head of the bed at the other side here and this is very different from what my van build is actually turning out to look like, but it's still really useful because I can make these changes and there's no consequences uh, when I'm working in the van. I can do this uh, in the evenings when it's dark out or even before I was able to actually start things, I was working on this. This is a very, very different design. Um, it's not one that I like and it's not one that I went with obviously, but it, it was something that I tried. So this one I added where the garage door was and I wanted to have a door leading in and I wanted that door to um, basically be usable as, as your everyday door. And I've decided against that in my, in my current build. But basically to do that, I needed to find a way of putting in my permanent bed because I don't want to have a pull-out bed. And I thought, well, what happens if I try and put the bed uh, like, like this, where it runs lengthwise and it's up at the front? So I did that. And then I added in a bench seat here, moved the model that I'd used for the desk in the previous... Uh, model over here and then I added a galley kitchen here and by doing this I was very quickly able to see that I do not like this design and that there is no way of having the bed here that's going to make it work for my needs. This here is just way too narrow. Um, <laughs> I'd be burning myself on the wood stove all the time. It's a bad use of space. This is just a bad design but that's okay. It's okay to have designs that don't work out 
what would really suck is if uh, you just came up with something boring and you keep the first thing that you do. Like I, I, I always kind of feel when I start these things that the first design I make, it's perfect. I don't want to change it. And then the more I play with it, the more I try designs, I'll make a few really bad designs, but I'll learn from them. So from this one here, I learned that I need a bigger bench. This, I, I need a big couch. I, I want to be able to sort of like stretch out on that couch almost. And that walking and usability of space is very important to me. And that it's nice to have this big counter here, but it's sacrificing other things. Sacrifice is a big thing in small builds. What you need to sacrifice something. It's all about compromising your space, but it's about making compromises that work for your lifestyle. So this one here, I spend a lot more time on my couch than I do in my kitchen. Let's take a look at another design here. This is one, this one's a little messy, so I'm going to hide all of the electronic components. And it looks like this one here isn't in the right layer, so let's get rid of that as well. And this layout here is the one that I made sort of in response to that. I went back to having the, the bed at the back, and then I thought, well, how can I get a really big bench in here? So I put the bench like this going across. Now, obviously there are some disadvantages to this design. To get into bed, you have to step on your couch. And that could get old really quickly, could not. Um, it is nice to have a big, long bench here. But of course, the, the edges here are kind of in the way. There's this weird edge here where the wheel well sticks out on both sides. And here you can see the kitchen starting to take its final shape. What it started, what it's looking like in the actual van is, is very close to this. And then I moved the desk to the other side. So I ultimately decided that this was not a good use of space for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that these wheel wells are ugly. It's aesthetically very cluttered, I feel. Um, well, even just opening up this uh, program from the other ones, I realized, oh wait, this is a very cluttered design. But let me hide some things here just to make things a little bit clearer why this doesn't work. So this here, I can't use any of the space under the bed from the inside. I mean, I can take away the cushions and then I could maybe have some drawers or something like that, but they're only accessible if I take the cushions away from, from the bed there. So I'm very limiting, I'm, I'm limiting myself in, in what I can do. And the majority of this bench space is being eaten up by the wheel wells anyway. I realized that I really like this kitchen. I think this kitchen's a good kitchen and I can see myself using it. So taking that forward, I arrived at my final design. So let's open up the final design and go through that. This design here is the one that is the final version. It's the one that's being made and it's the one that I'm referring to. It's the most complex in terms of actually framing out the elements. So this layout, I chose this layout for a number of reasons. Uh, I knew from previous models that I liked having the bed at the back, having it up at the front in any capacity just wasn't going to work for me. It would be nice to be able to use this door all the time, but the only way that that would work would basically be to flip everything in here and have the bed go over here. Let's move that over here just so I can show you this visually have the bed over there. Now, I have seen a few builds like this where the bed is up at the front, but the majority of the time, I want to have access to my cab. This will be the main way that I'm going through. I want to be able to like drive away without leaving the house. So crawling over the bed in shoes and stuff, not something that I want to deal with. So I knew that I wanted the bed at the back. I knew that I wanted as long a bench as I could. So I maxed out this area here for the bench. And you can see that there aren't any cushions in this design because I don't need them for this point. I, I removed them from the model. They're, they're still here. I just hid them. But uh, because I was actually referring to this for the framing, they kind of got in the way. Then I kept the L-shaped kitchen in the corner here, but I moved the sink into the corner because I realized a couple things that didn't work so well about that. Uh, and the first one is basically usability. Um, if I'm using the sink, and I have it over here, and I'm also using the stove, I need to reach into this corner to get available counter space, which means that I need to say like, I run the risk of putting my hand or my arm over the burner, 
Whereas if I have a free counter here, that's perfectly usable even when I'm using both of these items here. And in addition, it gives me a place to kind of throw things when I go in from the door here. Let's go in here and let's take a look at this, this framing because this is something that I've actually made. So you can see here that this is the framing for the toilet bench. So this part here, this is the lid that I built. That goes up there and then you can see all the framing. Now you can see that, that this is pretty similar to what I've built. This is the idea that I have. Now right now, I, I don't have these holes cut in these boards. These boards are solid, but you can kind of see the idea here. And then also exact framing that I used is here, except for these little bits here. I didn't, I didn't uh, build these ones up here because they turned out not to be necessary. And if I don't need to put a piece of wood in the van, wood's kind of heavy, I'm not going to put it. So you can also get some ideas here. Uh, parts of this van are, parts of this design here, sorry, are very literal, like the framing is fully built out and parts of it aren't. So let's take a look at the bed. This is the mattress. Let's hide the mattress. Uh, this part here, you can see that this framing was me thinking that I'd use, uh, I'd use two by twos for the slats in the bed. Now I turned out that I didn't want to use two by twos, so I didn't do that. But the concept is still 100% applicable to build this. All I needed to do was follow follow this plan. And even some of this framing is different here. You can see I've got bits going along here. These might get added later. These are for drawers. So again, I've got some parts here that are super literal that I can actually just go and make cuts from and some that are just ideas. This one here, this bit, this part up here, the, the, this drawer system that you can see going in, into the back here. These aren't the actual drawers that I'm going to make. This is just me playing around with ideas, building drawers. This isn't supposed to be an exact blueprint that I can, say, give to someone and they can make my van. This is a tool for me to be able to change ideas, for me to build the build, build, basically build something before I build it, learn from those mistakes, and then also be willing to be flexible with the design. So for instance, when I was building this, I realized that there was better ways of doing it. So I made those better ways of doing it work in there. Am I gonna go back into this program and change it? Probably not, because the program is not the final product. The program is a, or the model, sorry, it's, this is a tool to get me to the final pro product in reality. Now, whether or not this is something that other people wanna use for their projects is entirely up to them. I find it very, very helpful. Uh, for some things, less helpful for others. Sometimes you build something in SketchUp, and then when you go to build it in real life, you realize that it does just it just doesn't quite fit. It doesn't make the most sense because nothing's ever going to replace that feeling of being in a space. That's going to be the most important thing. But sometimes it's nice to be able to be in a space before you even build it. So thank you so much for watching this video. I thought it'd be a cool idea to show you the process and the idea behind the build that I'm building because it's really cool to see people um, building things and, and watching people's builds and I do a lot of that, but why is sometimes very important. So this is me signing off. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers, I will see you in the next video. Bye.